ABSL Summit. Beyond Tomorrow. Building a Sustainable Future. Now let us switch the perspective to the cities as the community for the business environment to thrive. According to ABSL City Ranking, Tri-City is the winner of the best perception of quality of life category. According to ABSL Strategic Foresight Report, 17% of companies intend to open a new center in Poland, while 42 in Tier 1 cities and 34 in Tier 2 ones. Well, what to consider when you open a new location? These are like general factors like cultural heritage, variety and attractiveness of cultural scene, residential market capabilities, definitely music events and atmosphere, attitude towards foreigners, and last but not least, cosmopolitan character of the city and sports facilities. Before I introduce our esteemed panelists, I would like to make an important note that if you are using a headset, uh, the panel is going to be uh, managed in Polish, so please switch to channel two to uh, enjoy the, the panel. With that, I have a great pleasure to welcome on the stage in the panel of City Strategies and Tools for Innovative Talent Attraction and Retention Supporting Business Growth, Jolanta Jaworska, Vice President, ABSL Director, Government and Regulatory Affairs at IBM Poland, Baltics and Ukraine, Agnieszka Chłoń Dominczak, Vice Rector at SGH Warsaw School of Economics. Karolina Zdrolowska, Head Coordinator for Entrepreneur and Social Dialogue at the capital city of Warsaw. Roman Ciepla, the City Mayor of Tarnów. And Michał Galimski, Partner and Head of Regional Markets Poland at Kuszman and Wellfield. Welcome to the stage. Dear participants, for your convenience, simultaneous interpretation is provided at the People panel titled City Strategies and Tools for Innovative Talent Attraction and Retention Supporting Business Growth. Please collect your receivers from our reception desk. Welcome, everyone. Like you've just heard, we are now changing top, uh, chain, may, having a change. The discussion will take place in Polish, but I think it's a good thing because this is our, our local challenge as well, which Anya has just uh, discussed. We have been hearing in our discussions in the lobby during our summit that uh, the majority of companies or businesses are planning further growth, which we are all very happy about. However, we are aware that both the availability of talent and the availability of workforce is, is very limited and we, we are facing enormous challenges, which is why we have invited um, a variety of uh, participants to the discussion from cities, from the Tarnów and Warsaw and um, universities. And here we are very happy to have Professor Agnieszka Chłoń Dominczak, who represents uh, the Warsaw School of Economics and also people from the business community. And within this very, this very brief time, we would like to find out from you how cities, but also how universities, colleges, and how um, business 
how they all uh, plan for the future, what are the specific solutions that they have already put in place or are in the pipeline in cities, at universities or in business in order to increase the attractiveness of or the attraction for talent. Now over to uh, Karolina Zdrodowska from Warsaw. Uh, good uh, morning, everyone. Everyone, welcome to all of you. Warsaw is the capital city. By all means, it puts a premium on attracting talent to the city. Of course, we are the capital city of Poland, which means that we have a relatively high quality of life. Uh, that is uh, self-evident. Uh, the cultural offering, the entertainment, education, all this is very extensive, but of course, we are make, doing our best to attract talent, not just from across Poland, but also from elsewhere, from beyond Poland. We present our city and the investment of our city at international trade exhibition in Munich and in Kanto. Every, this is where we every year participate. And, and that's where we not just um, present ourselves to large investors, but we also show the city of Warsaw as a great place to live, a place which has a very extensive offering for its residents. Warsaw also gives you uh, scholarship uh, schemes for students, uh, for uh, PhD students, 49, uh, 49 non-public universities, 17 um, public universities, and these schools are very highly rated in various rankings, and our educational um, products are uh, also translated onto a greater attraction for talent uh, to our city. It's not just about them studying here, though, it's also about them staying. And these forecasts are quite optimistic because as many as 93 students consider Warsaw, according to research, as a place which creates um, conditions conducive for business. So they know that their professional growth is possible here in the future. Warsaw also has developed a strategy for growth, which is uh, directed towards specific sectors, to be more precise. We have five areas of economic excellence, which we would like to in which we would like uh, Warsaw to be as competitive as possible, not just um, compared to Poland, but also internationally by 2040. And of course, the business services sector is in the top five, but there's also the creative industries, um, including uh, game dev. And we want Warsaw to become a hub for startups from across Central and Eastern Europe by 2040. And we have defined it based on uh, analyses, and we are convinced that this is where Warsaw's potential lies. Thank you very much. Indeed, uh, very interesting. And now a question to Madam Professor. Uh, the, the best Polish economic university, which as every university is uh, coping and trying to cope with challenges related to fewer uh, um, candidates, in recruitment, yeah, well, we are looking at it from the point of view of, of a perspective uh, which, uh, of a university which is looking for young uh, people. We provide talent for the labor market and we also look for talent um, in our staff. Uh, for our staff. So we have different perspectives here as an economic, as a university of uh, economics, school of economics, we have a specific offer because we are very much um, oriented towards the individual progress of our students. Uh, um, the curricula for many years have been built in the way, in, in a way where the students choose the, the teachers, they have quite a big say on how their course of study will progress. And this is what attracts a lot of young young people to us for whom Warsaw School of Economics is the first choice. Of course, we are competing with the international market. We need to remember that. But I get the impression that still we are, in very many cases, um, the, the school of the first choice for students. For example, um, foreign languages are at a very, very high competitive level. And this has always attracted um, students, young people to our school. 
They know that when they graduate, they will get a certificate, but, but most of all, a great uh, operational skill in English, in business English, um, which is very important. And we have uh, worked with the business sector for many years. We have a partner club with which we also work as regards internships and um, lectures with practitioners. Um, we work with student organizations. So, so this, to sh this is how we show um, how we work with the market. And there's a lot to take from that um, for our students, and many appreciate it. We do our best to respond uh, on an ongoing basis in terms of our teaching um, uh, scope. Uh, new uh, courses of study are open. There is a, a course on big data analysis, that, which is increasingly popular. So we are trying to respond to the needs that are coming up. We can also see a trend trends which pertain to the, our students, there is insufficient talent. We know that uh, many people start working already at university. That, that's the result. So we are uh, doing our best to match our way of working, how the classes are taught uh, for the students to be able to reconcile study, studying and work so that you can gain professional experience while still at university. We can see it's important and we notice that. We encourage PhD students. We have quite a lot of um, implementation PhDs which are uh, carried out to, to get in partnership with businesses. It's now for the second year that we've been recruiting uh, such a PhD um, candidates. And this is also a way to encourage talent for them to progress in in the, in the academic career. Uh, we also work with our PhD students. We uh, involve them in international projects. We give them an opportunity to uh, gain a presence in an international academic community. Uh, we, also, we have to compete for th those talents for, uh, with the sector that comes from outside the academia. So there are many challenges, but the most important thing is to see what the expectations are, what the needs are, to match our offer to what's out there, and to have good quality, um, good quality offer for the students. And this is the most important uh, factor that attracts the best students to us, which we are very happy about. That's right, good quality. This is something that gets repeated over and over in you know, every case. Um, let's move on to the mayor of Tarnów. What um, do you do in order for your city to have the best quality? And to be able to grow further. Let me introduce myself first. I represent a, a, a city with a 100,000 population, which is second largest after Krakow in the Małopolska region in southern Poland. But even if we look at, at the 250 people in the uh, Tarnow uh, urban area, this is uh, more or less uh, as many as the active students in Krakow. So our competitive standing has to consider this difference in potential. If we also consider that that uh, the, um, the the smartest people go to university from this urban area so there there are every year there are a certain group of people um, move out move away and they go to other uh, academic centers with their ho taking their hopes there it's an issue but uh, but this is something that we have not noticed so far this potential that does not leave uh, the pandemic has shown us, and, and the studies that we have carried out, we uh, produced so-called heat maps. You can see that every day about 10,000 people from the entire urban area goes to work in, an, in outsourcing companies. That was the question there for the respondents, uh, mainly to Krakow, but also to Rzeszów. During the second day of our discussion, we know for sure that uh, people who work in BPO uh, companies uh, state that they would uh, like to work from home, at least partially, maybe not necessarily stay there for the whole week, or maybe not necessarily go to the office for the entire week. 
uh, how will this uh, bad pandemic adventure end? Uh, we will see, but I think it will reevaluate the rules of work, and I think the employers, uh, forced by the employees to some extent, will decide to accept uh, uh, work from home. And here is where I can see uh, opportunities for Tarnov or cities such as uh, Tarnov. And I'm talking here on behalf of my colleagues from medium sized uh, cities. Uh, which uh, which would uh, which invite outsourcing companies uh, to uh, the cities Today, the head of the European Commission said that the pandemic is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I think what we should also have long-term activities, because at the end of the day, the way people behave, that doesn't change in leaps, while there may be some impulses causing change. But then we want to be with families. Women want to have babies. And uh, we want to look after our families, and we prefer to live perhaps in the suburbs as opposed to living in a tower block um, where your neighbors can be a nuisance. We like to live in a nice town, in a nice surrounding. I think it's only natural. On the other hand, we want to provide good quality of life. And that's one of the goals of our strategy. Because already today, we provide uh, places for all children in preschools, in uh, crashes as well, although perhaps not many people want that as a goal of in their life, but in, in terms of the revenues we make as a local authority, the other problem is um, the, the salary you can make in a, in a town. I mean, the bigger the town, the city, the bigger the metropolis, the bigger is the job offer, and the more you get paid. On the one hand, it does motivate people as an indicator, but it's probably the, the decisive factor when you make your first choices. Now we're talking about talent, and then you suggested that theme of talent retention. I like this idea very much. I think the question should be, what does this really mean, or what would happen? If a, an ecosystem would only be filled with talent, obviously that would be quite artificial. That's not something we want. That's not something we are able to achieve. We live here and now. We are all different, different needs and behaviors and different talents, too. Employers would like to hire someone who's flexible and aged 25, 35, or 40. Now the question is, what happens next? What happens later? What happens to those people that are seeing some professional burnt out already and they are thinking of settling down rather than be part of the chase and then working towards targets? I once heard this term of Academy of the Second Chance. Well, this could be an idea, something that smaller cities could do, while they offer comparable quality of life, because what you get in Tarnov is exactly the same you can get in Krakow. Obviously with different proportions, but I think today already we are able to provide the right quality of life in terms of the job offer. Probably on the financial side it won't be that satisfactory, but many people, having made their first experience, they are happy to settle down and do similar jobs, but there's simply no specialization for them. So if they could reach train, perhaps, or find a niche. 
Um, these are the solutions uh, we have to organize today, uh, perhaps by cooperating with local universities or with companies and corporations, and just consider which sections or parts of bigger areas could be relocated to smaller towns. So we are in, in contact with um, ABSL. It must be our third or fourth year already because we're looking for the right solutions to meet uh, the needs of the town we live in and the pandemic has changed everything so we need to stay efficient well thank you for that and thank you for referring to what the um, previous uh, person was saying from Volvo the importance they attach to retraining or reskilling of people and that was just an example. Uh, reskilling is not just about those um, within the 25 to 35 age bracket. Instead, it is offered to all staff. So slowly, moving now to Michał Galiński. Right. Business. Is it just um, the age bracket of 25 to 35? Is this the only age group uh, that we are placing our bets on? Is that right? How do you and how do your clients or customers see the change? Which would be opportunities um, for medium-sized towns, especially now that the approach to remote work is changing. And also there may be a different approach to employees um, becoming more customized. Well, thank you for the question. I think that it's an interesting Perspective. The age group we are discussing is important for cities because uh, these are the newcomers to organizations where business um, is happy to invest in uh, people fresh out of university. And as a business, we also want to work with, univer with universities to get the right skills. But the beginning of um, a person's career is the time when business invests in people. So what cities could do, I can see an opportunity here. If a city is able to retain a student in their city, then obviously the role for business is to try and provide some continuity. So smaller towns that have universities or colleges and if they can work together with business so that the person stays in the town after they graduate, I can see an, an opportunity for the future. When you start your career in a spe specific organization, then there may not be perhaps too many barriers for growth for that person. So this age group, um, perhaps the, the nature of that could change. Now, your second question, is the situation today an opportunity for smaller towns? Uh, clearly so. Uh, see what happens regionally. Uh, living costs in bigger cities are rising. Rental costs. Many of the students still haven't returned to the big cities, so that's an opportunity to tap into. And what we heard at the previous panels um, throughout the ABSL, the companies um, are now more open to hiring in other towns other than those where their headquarters are. So yes, um, there is uh, growing tolerance to involve people from other um, towns and conurbations. So what does business do? Here is the next question. To attract talent. What's your point of view? How do you see this? 
Pana firma, ale również pana Whether it's your company or your clients, what um, are the strategies? Na ile może te strategie czy te pomysły um, są zbieżne z tym, are co these strategies and ideas um, similar or consistent uh, with what we heard? from universities and cities, and obviously they're all of businesses to create such places, and business definitely needs cooperation. It's not that business just um, has expectations. No, we do have a role to play. I think um, it's a good idea to communicate uh, the opportunities as early as secondary school, so that when the student uh, picks a university, they should think one step ahead, now even more than that, two steps or three steps ahead. And that's a role for businesses in combination with cities um, and, and universities and even secondary schools to be able to um, identify the, the job offer so that people don't want necessarily to go elsewhere. I think what we do as a company, we advise businesses on the cities um, to go to. So from the perspective of our clients, there are several perspectives that I can share with you. So we do study the investment potential of cities. We have our annual reports, such as the BEAS um, report, and we do certain things together with our partners. And obviously everyone would like to know which uh, city scores the highest, but we need to wait until we learn about this. The, the, the power um, of policy cities lies in the fact that there are quite a few of those. There are at least 10 strong centers and there are new players coming in. And on top of that, the coronavirus change, that there is a new opportunity coming with this. But what we need is even closer cooperation between business, cities and academia. For years, We've been saying about the same things, but today some of those barriers have been removed. Oh, that's great. Thank you for that. And uh, yes, indeed, uh, on the previous panels and throughout the different discussions, I just want to refer to what the mayor of Tarnów has said. So what we've heard is that we are not making upfront assumptions and perhaps the the, the, the audience uh, could be involved in the discussion. It's not about 100% remote work or 100% office work. But we're looking for solutions that will support um, home office work. And I think that's a great opportunity for small towns, so a major challenge for a city like Warsaw. And it's clearly um, a challenge for universities. Właśnie pytanie o tą, e, o tą e, naukę zdalną, tak? która, jest, która jest taka learning? trudna i właśnie jak, jak uczelnia it? sobie z tym, so z tym radzi, tak? jak tutaj zachęcić do tego, żeby ci studenci naprawdę studiowali. What do you do to ensure that tak students tak, actually study? Well, bardzo, bardzo, we had to find a way, although we do miss our students. I mean, remote education is never going to fulfill the emptiness in our buildings or to provide what's the quintessential student life, which is um, just staying together as a group of students. So we do need students physically there, but we can see that in many cases, hybrid learning, where some of the lectures will be delivered um, stationary, some of that will be delivered online. I think it's there to stay for different reasons. Um, some of it is student preferences because in many cases online courses have actually worked. And I have to say we've been really quick implementing procedures for remote learning. We've set up groups, we've launched lectures and a platform and we've also learned um, how to teach online teaching. 
So that's already um, part of what we do. But universities is not just didactics. It's, um, it's also about the actual process of teaching. And I have to say, having this combination of working from school and from home, that became part of our day-to-day -day work. And that's why it was perhaps easier for us to move into the hybrid form, although we do want our students back in the building. Um, many of the elements we've discussed uh, today are part of the research that I do. I'm involved in building um, a system for monitoring uh, the, what, what happens to graduates. And that way, um, universities and employers can learn what happens to students, how well they do five years after graduation. There are two measures we apply, measures of success, well, that's um, unemployment and money. But it's uh, not just money in, in terms of the money they make, but compared to what the remuneration is locally. So it's important not just how much they earn in Polish Zlotys, but also how much they can buy for the money that they earn. Tarnów is definitely less expensive in terms of daily costs, uh, availability of services such as uh, kindergartens, creches. It's definitely cheaper than uh, in Tarnów than in Warsaw. So sometimes it's not about how much you earn, but how much you can buy for it or what, co what quality of life you can get for that. And that is, this is very important and some graduates also choose living in cities where they won't earn as much as they would in Warsaw, but they will have a much better quality of life for the same or um, less, the same kind of money or less money. So this is worth noting. Another trend that we have to notice is that there is and there will be fewer young people, uh, strictly speaking in demographic terms. So looking just at we're looking at people 30, 40, 45 years old, that's not enough to consider just them long term, because for uh, strictly demographic reasons, there will be people who are 50 and over, and the offer for them is uh, really required in order for them to develop their talents and help others develop their talents. So age management, mentoring, where experienced individuals can provide, can share their experience with young people. These are all solutions that are an absolute must in order for this pool of talents to be as big as possible and for us to have it, in order not to just limit ourselves to what seems an obvious talent, but also to those talents who are less obvious. Thank you very much. Now, referring to what uh, Madam Professor said and Mr. Mayer, has, uh, they both have said about talents, that yes, our way of thinking about them is very broad. So, and so we um, we don't divide, we uh, combine, we put to, uh, uh, factors together. Now, to Warsaw, I realize that because we had a discussion before, uh, Warsaw has plans uh, looking at what's happening to in the labor market, in demographics. You have plans to attract foreigners. Maybe you would like to say something about it. What are your plans? Perhaps other cities will be able to make use of your plans. Def Definitely from the point of view of Warsaw, I've already said uh, something about attracting talent and students from abroad to our city, but also from the point of view of the needs of the labor market, we need to mention uh, attracting talent from the East, Ukraine, Belarus. And that is a huge resource of people who who fill in those jobs in Warsaw and all over Poland. To be, uh, be honest, and I need to mention this, for this kind of work to be possible uh, not to, without lowering the skills or qualifications, we need to have a um, central program such as Poland Business Helper, which has made it easier to gain a work permit in Poland for uh, people from Belarus. In July, it was extended to other countries as well. And this definitely contributes to the labor market in Poland uh, and attraction of talent to be as efficient as possible. So this is a positive um, 
aspect of central measures. Uh, but the city uh, offers uh, a, little, a lot of support to young people, uh, startups, accelerators, but these are all auxiliary tasks. They do not follow from the law. And like we said uh, today at uh, morn the, uh, morning meeting, we have great concerns that because there are those central measures related to the New Deal program, a huge amount of our uh, measures towards businesses and uh, a huge part of the programs which we have been perfecting for years will go through a very deep crisis in the coming years. From the point of view of local authorities and from the point of view of any investor, um, any business person, the sense of instability of uh, income, of budgets, or, and uh, that uh, certain subsidies or regulations will be altered every year, that causes great concern also in local government. So a little bit uh, on the positive side about central measures, but we are still facing this huge problem. Thank you very much. By all means, I agree with you. This is why we are talking with you. We are all in the same boat, and it is in our shared interest for all those ecosystems to work together as well as possible, because that's when we will succeed. Mr. Mayor, coming back to what I've said, perhaps uh, commuting is not so bad after all. It's a good thing that you're doing research on that, that's for sure. And the question is, uh, well, business will certainly take some action where it, it will be more possible to work from home. So what is your idea to tap into that, to tap into that uni this unique point in time? You're right, we are in an interesting um, point in time in terms of uh, business growth. Yes, we also need to uh, notice two elements, two things. First of all, there's quite a quick process automation uh, trend, not just in production, but also in services. And this will reflect on how we work, definitely. And uh, secondly, there are technological advances which uh, move towards cloud cloud uh, work rather than our own resources. It's not no longer enough to have an office building with a server room with uh, so and so many um, computers because people will come because you pay them. It's not enough anymore. You have to give them the right work satisfaction to those uh, employees whom we don't want to lose because uh, new ones, although new ones, will pro definitely be attracted with good working conditions or a good career opportunities. And if it is so that um, that working conditions are going to be the decisive factor, then we are going to create a good quality of life. Like the professor has said, not just about how much you earn, but how much you pay um, on a daily basis, uh, just daily living costs. Uh, it will be easier to have your own apartment because the price will be lower and, uh, mm, and the income will be comparable, regardless of whether you work in an office building or in your own home. Uh, yesterday, in the lobby, the uh, head of a large uh, corporation said that that his company has saved about a million dollars just on traveling because people stayed at home and they didn't have so many business trips. And I think that every um, economic director has noticed uh, this kind of saving and it will always ask this question, do you really need to go? And this will stay in the subconscious of many decision makers and perhaps this corporate behavior will also change. And this is also an opportunity for those who say that they want to work partly at home and partly in the office. So to provide uh, ways to work, for example, using cloud systems, uh, people will be able to carry out 
even really complicated operations, even if not seated in the company's office. So there is a real opportunity for Tarnov, and that's why I'm here to say that life in Tarnov is good or even better, and it's uh, I'm not, not just bragging about this. We've just finished a tasting festival. There's going to be a new one starting uh, Saturday on a um, comedy festival. I think what our offer is similar to that in Metropolis, and the air is pretty good. Well, thank you for that. Do come to uh, Tarnów and do come to Warsaw. And the final word from business. So having heard the discussion, what is your, what is your company's view of the future? What are the opportunities for remote work or hybrid forms, both for work and education? And what's it like for our market as a whole? Again, I would say that culture is really the main theme. And I would say that we mustn't forget this. Hybrid work is um, is like a buzzword. Everyone's talking about this, and we cannot leave it just like that. But the question is, how are we going to adapt to this? As a business, as an organization, I'm afraid we still don't have very effective methods to keep up the culture or to create organizational culture now that we work um, in hybrid form. I represent here a company which, if at the end of the day, um, rents office space. You might think I'm not objective, but still I'm going to say this. I don't really see uh, other alternatives for businesses to create organizational culture if they only work remotely. I'm pretty pessimistic, to be honest, when it comes to this. But then I think with, with you at this conference here physically, I think that explains many things because you're not here online, you're here physically. So I would say organizational culture is really important. And previous panels have highlighted that as well. Thank you very much for that. Uh, could be a much longer discussion, but our takeaway from this and I want to say thank you because each and every one of you spoke about this. So the takeaway is that we are changing and we keep changing. But whether it's the city or the university or the business, their approaches are changing as well, becoming more a sort of bespoke. Um, whether it regards the student or an employee, I mean, it's more uh, individualized. So I think that's the way to motivate talent. Well, thank you very much for this and um, hope to have more conversations in the hall. Thank you very much. Resilience, maturity, talents, growth, innovation, the change made us stronger, this all made us sustainable. ABSL Summit, beyond tomorrow, building a sustainable future.